So in this video clip I will show how to create a mechanism which acts as a tool. So we start with an empty station, a flat one, and I click create. And now this station is totally empty and we will start to import the geometry that will actually be used for the mechanism. And I have prepared that beforehand. I will show that in another video later on. But uh, basically, uh, we have to make sure that we have a proper model tool. In this case, it is a gripper. And it is downloaded from a site with the CAD models. Uh, in this case, it is a Shunk tool, JPG. Uh, and uh, I uh, made secure that this is of the SAT, the ACES format, which is the native Robo Studio format. In this case, that is the only one I can import, so that makes this choice easy. Otherwise, uh, one can use step or various types of formats. But this includes assembly 2 is the gripper, 2.1 and 2.2 are the fingers, so um, are the moving objects of the gripper. So just download it and open it in the Robo Studio, like this one, and it looks like this. So here we have the gripper, we have the finger, one and two. They can move in that direction, x direction in this case. And that part actually should be mounted on the flange on the robot. Uh, this is not completely true. I mean, in, in, in the case, it can be done that, that way. But normally we have a, a um, specific mounting flange adapter for the robot, which could be a tool-changing device or similar. But in any case, we assume that this will be mounted directly on the robot flange, for simplicity. Okay, so the first thing is to make sure that we orient and position it in a way that we want to have it when we snap it onto the robot. So in this case, I don't know exactly how it will be, but we assume that the z-axis will be pointed out from the gripper and for that we have to reorient this one and uh, redefine the origin of this gripper so everything is um, selected here and right click on this one or one actually and under position we have Rotate, so rotate around the x-axis, see the red is x-axis, 90 degrees. And that will make the gripper to be pointing in the right direction. And then one can check the um, size of this one. We have to raise the gripper so it is located at the origin or the base here and there are some options to do, actually do that or one can actually measure it in the CAD model or different ways but in this case I can select the measurement here and also the snapping you can check whatever and as you see here there are some options to actually measure these kind of things. So uh, it seems that I can measure or select that one maybe is better. Let's see. Ah, sorry. I like that. Yes. Very good. So actually from that one and that one and it turns out to be 16 millimeters as you see here. So 
you have to find a way to measure this. So that means that I have to raise it 16 millimeters in Z direction. Take away that one, take away that one, and I select all of those and position, set position, and 16 millimeter up. Like that one, close. So now position in the right way. And then also I would like, it's not really necessary, but uh, in this case I put the fingers in the close position. And um, for that reason, well, just show it. So I select that one and minus four millimeter in the X direction. Position, set position, minus four, like that one. Then I select that one, and that should go in plus four millimeter in the X direction, which is the red one here. Four like that one okay so now we are done what happens now is that we have to redefine the local origin of the gripper and all its components which include the fingers uh, for that one we cannot select everyone at the same time but have to take them one by one so select the first one right click modify and set local origin and set zero on everything here and apply finger set zero on everything apply that one zero on everything and apply so now we have the local origin at the origin of the world and that would be far, quite fine in, in this case when we snap the gripper to the robot when everything is ready and defined as a tool mechanism okay what we also need is a, a frame which will define the two center point now i just create something that will work the size of this one is roughly 45 50 millimeters something similar and I will select a two center point at 60 millimeter from the base oh, great so that's fine close here that's called frame one okay so now we are ready to define the mechanism so in the modeling tab here I go to create mechanism in the mechanism I can select a new name this case is the chunky gripper um, well it doesn't matter I can take whatever here um, so chunk I think it's called JP and it, it doesn't matter really 64 I think it was even so anyway, just a name here and mechanism type, tool, and uh, we have the links, so we double click on those. So double click on the links and something pops up here that should be filled in. So we have the link name L1, I, I can change those if I like to, but that is a good name. And select the component, which is actually the base link that one assembly two set as base link and click on this one so it will be added to the mechanism and tool of course and click on apply and then we take the next one which is l2 and select component take the first finger which is now colored in this way here and click on this one add it apply and the third one select the second finger click on that arrow and apply and now cancel so we leave this uh, menu next is 
to define the joints. And we have joint names, we have two joints, J1 and J2. And they are both prismatic, so I click on J1 prismatic. Parent link is the base link, L1. Child link is L2, the active. And now this one is, is, is colored here, as you see, gray or whatever shaded. And it should move in X direction from this position. So first position is zero, fine. Second position is one. And axis direction is the same, so one. That's fine. That is the direction of the vector, so to say. And then we have the minimum limit is zero. We start from zero and move four millimeter in the stroke length. Apply. The next one is J2, prismatic. Now remember that the parent link is not L2, it's still the base link. So for a general purpose mechanism, it could be whatever, there could be many links, but we have to define, uh, we have to remember to define this here. L1, channel link L3, active, and this will move in negative x direction. So negative, like that, and the joint, um, the, the limit is zero, and four millimeter stroke. And if I move this now, you can just see, I mean, we can always check this here that, yeah, it is working in the right way. Uh, I could do that for the other one, but the first one as well, of course. Apply. Now cancel. These are defined. Now we have the tool data. So double click on that one, create tool data. So we have a tool data name belonging to the base link and we have to select values from target frame and yeah that has to be selected and that one so first i click on that one and then on the target and it identifies frame one mass roughly one kilo i mean this is not critical at the moment center gravity maybe around 30 millimeter. I don't insert anything here, just click on OK. And skip calibration, dependencies, compile mechanism, click on that one, and it is created. Now what we can do at this moment, we can actually add some values for the uh, different poses of this one. Now this is a simple mechanism with only two joints, but in more complex uh, it could be lots of different poses that are defined. And those can be used later on in the simulation and controlling different things. So I just add here and set, well, I can have one home pose, which is actually as it is now. Uh, apply. And we can have another one, and it pops up here, pose, home. We can have one, another one, close, which is the same as this one. And apply, and we can have open. Uh, we can call it whatever, actually. Uh, which is open like this one, and cancel. So we have that one, and that one. So, you see. Fine. What happens now is that we can set transition times between those. And transition times between close and open are the most interesting. So, for example, 0 0.2 seconds, and for that one, 0 0.2 seconds. And that will be reflected in the simulation. Okay, now everything should be ready as it is. So you can delete that one and go to the home tab and now we just um, have the mechanism here 
the um, CAD models uh, are included or embedded within the mechanism. So you should make sure that you have a copy of those before you do this. So now I right click on this one and um, save it as a library component. And now I have a test folder here, just put it in and I uh, can choose it to put it in any kind of uh, folder, so to say I have a libraries test here, otherwise it could have different kind of things here, but this is just for testing and it will have a, a extension RS lib as a library for a for studio. So save like that one. And now it changes its function here. It has a library icon type of component. Okay, so that's fine. And what we can do now is actually to add it to the robot. So what we do now is to just check how it will be. Um, so we add a robot IRB140 in this case and click on OK. Now this is positioned in the same position as the gripper, which is here. Okay, we don't care about that. That is the case at the moment. And um, looking nice, fine. What we need now is to um, create a robot system from layout. So it's named something. I don't care about the naming at the moment, but we can, yeah, I can change the naming to gripper test one, for example, and location should be something different, obviously, uh, Robo Studio and uh, stations and test and just temp here and yeah, that's fine. And we put test one, okay, that's fine. And now I click on next, so that's fine. Next. And what we have to do now to think about a gripper does need do need some uh, outputs to control it. We have a pneumatic driven gripper which needs an open activity and a closing activity from a valve actually two outputs then so we need to add that so for the system options we click on options for the edit here there are different ways to do this but i show it in this way now so we click on industrial network and we need a profibus controller and a Profinet device. I will show later on what this means. Okay. And finish. And now it will be generated and created. So quite soon everything will be up and running with a controller for this kind of robot. Takes a while. Connecting, good, auto. Yeah, now everything is up and running as it should. Great. So, just to see that things are working in a proper way, we click on the gripper, drag it to the robot, and do you want to update the position of the gripper, Shunk JPG64? Yes. And it pops in the right way here. Now as I said in, in, in most cases maybe I think this is JPK 50 but it doesn't really matter and uh, this just for, as an example. Now we normally don't mount it like this but this is just for showing how it looks like. Normally we have a tool changing device here in the middle between the flange and the gripper but it works in a way. So if we just click on jog reorient 
and click on that one so we can see that robot moves according to the uh, I just came into a sort of a uh, singularity here so I have to jump home again but as you can, as you can see it works it will work around the two center point here as it should fine so we jump home again that one. Now to get this into a working simulation and program we have to add the um, outputs in the controller. So if you click on controller here we have the configuration editor click on that one the uh, IO system and up comes everything within the controller. We added a profit bus device and profit net internal device. We have that one. And um, if you right click on the profit bus, bus design device, we can add a new device connected to that one. And for this one, we add an IU board. And this is called board 10. Like that one, it's a profit bus connected to that one network, it's activated and so forth. Uh, real one, and yeah, just click OK, everything is fine. It says here the changes will not take effect until the control is restarted. Okay, know that now we add a signal. So if you click on the signal, we get all the signals within the system quite a lot. Most of them or everything here is internal, but we will add a signal now, a new signal and uh, name, can call it whatever. There are some names that are reserved for the system, so to say, but uh, be aware about that. But otherwise uh, it can be called anything. So gripper open, for example, and type of signal is digital output and assigned to device now we have board 10 here so that was what i just defined that is the io board within the controller device mapping that is actually we have 16 digital outputs available on the board which is a physical board uh, which you buy with the robot or as yeah added board that you plug in to the controller so to say from avb robotics so device mapping is from 0 to 15 I connect this physically to, for example, the connection 14 and 15. 14 is for open, 15 for close. That is how I connect it. Now, I just made it up, but it could be like this. And same thing, doesn't take effect until the control is restarted. Now it pops up here, grip open, digital output button. We need another one, a new signal. We call this Ripper close and type of signal and digital output assigned to board 10 and mapping connected to output 15. So same thing here we need to restart now everything is set we do a restart warm start here and OK we wait until it is restarted. like that great so now we have ios everything should be ready to do some programming and what we do now is uh, to just create some simple things that don't care about work objects and so forth just to create some motions and see how it works so i create a teach target here at well we can look at here we have the tool chunk i don't care about the the uh, motion so much but they could be move uh, joint uh, everything and a little bit slower so we'll see how things uh, works when it moves and we take a 
then yeah, set 10 for example. That's fine. And then we teach a target. And yes, we have target here. And then we do some targets. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, it's right. Everything is perfect as it should be. So the reference is the world. And we should have a position here which is around 500 millimeters or something like that. Uh, robot is quite small. So the position here in X could be zero and Y could be like, say, 300 and Z could be 600 or something like that. And we just, and we should also fix the set orientation. Set orientation could be downwards. So we have a rotation of Y, something like 180. That's perfect. Just add it here. And so it will be position in that. Uh, oh, it should work, I think so. And then we can add change this to 500 and 500 add. Yeah, it should work. And then we take this to maybe 200 and 400 and back to 600 add and create and now we see how things are working we define a path create path don't change the name we just keep it as it is uh, this is just for testing things drag the targets down to the path, fine, and right click on that one, and configurations, auto configuration, and uh, seems to be working, and we just go ahead and move it on path, like that one, see that everything is working as expected, Right. Yeah, good. Now what to do is we take the last one, or well, the first generated target ten, move it down here. So we stop at the same position. Okay, and now we move that target. Good, great. So, what's happening now is that we have to define, close that one, we have to define some actions with the gripper here. And we can do it in different ways, but uh, just for simplicity, I don't create any procedures for that one. I, I can easily create a procedure in rapid code for open and close. But in this case, I just put it here as actions. So actually, just after this one, I create a action instruction. And um, for this one, I have a digital output. And uh, we have signal here, gripper close and gripper open. So. It is closed now at the moment, but we open it. And the value for open is should be one. Great. So you see that what I define as a signal that is included in the rapid code as an argument. Great. And uh, we open, we have to release the close value. So digital output close has to be zero. Great. And those pop up here. So we have grip open one, grip close zero. That means that it is released that one and we activate the open statement. That's fine. And um, then we can do something below here. So we do the opposite. We take the close one, so we close it. So digital output, set digital output 
close value is should be one. Great. And the open should be zero. Great. And we can do it again here. Uh, just bring those. Control copy. Move it here. Control V. So copy paste. Quite easy. Uh, open one. Close zero. And that one here. Uh, just select that one and that one with a shift or a control. Control Z. Click on that one. Control V. So we have a set of actions here. It should still be possible to run this in a proper way. And we can actually see that things works as intended. So if you have that one and um, for the uh, uh, simulator here we have uh, the IO simulation and we can here select the panel of that one and we select the board 10 panel and we have two outputs grip close grip open so if I then run this move along path so this is one now and then we should close the gripper that goes one and one the other is zero all the time so we can check here that if they are either one or zero that should work in a proper way if we look closely here now we will see that nothing is actually moving so we just rerun it. Move along path. It stays the same all the time. It's just moving in a joint interpolation mode between the targets. So this is not so exciting. So the next part will actually be to uh, generate events but at this stage we have to create the rapid code just close this one and click on the home tab synchronize to rapid make sure that everything is selected like that one this will generate the program so if you click on the rapid tab like that one and move down to module one uh, you can look here we have a main module as one well. main module main module one path 10 so um, what happens now um, is if I click on module one I will get the instructions here in rapid code path 10 budget and, and so forth uh, as I said before this could be set in a procedure open this in procedure close for a nicer program but we don't care about that now so we have this now we have the main module we can add this code here path underscore 10 like that and we just apply apply everything and no errors fine what we can do now is or what we have to do synchronize to the station back select everything and go back to this one and see that everything looks fine we have path inside the main entry point procedure that works fine so go to the simulation here check the setup for that one and works fine and we can just check now that that runs as expected and it does now the final thing is actually to get the action working within the simulation meaning that we have fingers that actually moves so to do that we go to the configuration here configure click on that one here see that small arrow and event manager click that one we add 
hand event and activation on I signal change that is preset default next and we have a signal name called close and we will open we will close we will open that is what I defined and if signal is true next action type action type should actually be to move the mechanism right we define some poses for that one so the mechanism is the shunk jgp64 and the pose for the close action should be close simple as that we can do other things here but we don't do that finish and then we add another one the same thing here just click next and we go down to the open when it's true yes next and the action is to move the mechanism we do some comments here if you like to do that i don't care about that now so on the next the active mechanism is that one we define the pose is open finish so now we are done go to the view and we run the simulation again so now we can see that things are actually moving now it's close open close and we can do it one more time for close up open close open close you see there is a transaction time as well i put it to 0.2 seconds so this is actually working in a proper way let's just find one final note about this what one can do if one like to do it that is to add the actual fingers here uh, it is so just to finish up this demonstration with the grip i will just demonstrate how to uh, integrate fingers to the moving parts here or the mechanism uh, as an example uh, i mean most cases uh, the thing should be maybe more uh, appropriate for a specific uh, application and, and design accordingly in the CAD system but you can always also use the modeling tools uh, within Robo Studio for these kind of quite simple things uh, if needed so to say and that is what I want to show now so if you just take the gripper within the origin of the world here and uh, place it there uh, as the library uh, tool without the robot I clean it up now and you have the fingers here uh, the moving part of the mechanism and you can just if you like in this example create a solid um, a box and uh, you, you click on this one here you have um, body selection and um, uh, snap end and you snap on the end of that finger here like that one and then you click the length length is as I mentioned 18 millimeter here I mean it could be whatever it doesn't matter really just for this example and 10 millimeter width and uh, the height 20 millimeter and we create that one like that close that and in this case i will just demonstrate how we can subtract a part of that one to get the finger a little bit nicer and we create another solid another box and the corner in this case put this one here as a reference and a cube 10 10 10 millimeter great like that one we lower it down to this one here and right click on that one and position set position and local reference and minus 10 millimeter apply so it goes down here and then we subtract from the main part this one so we use this subtract part here just click 
those. So we open these by the body and body of that one. This is the main, this is the tube. And we don't keep the origi original, skip that one, subtract the main part with the cube and create like that one. Close. So now we have a finger, but it is not moving with the joint or with the link yet. You can just check it. Uh, I will check it later. Sorry. So we and uh, yeah we go to the home tab here so we have this one here and we make a copy of that one click on that one and make a paste so we get another one so we have two at the same place and this one now placed at the same position we right click on that one and mirror and mirror with the yz plane because it is in the in the in the in the origin it will be placed on that one so we mirror that one why that like that one so it pops up nicely on that side that is pretty nice so we check now with the mechanism joint jog so if i move that as you see it, it is not moving with that one what we do with that, we can take away with this, this number, because that is redundant. We create that one, so like that. Good. So now we check this one is that one. Okay. We open up the, the gripper to the different links. One is the base, that is finger. So we take this one and snap it on the, that finger. We, we can update or know it doesn't really matter because it is positioned in the right position. So just click no because it is already in that position it should be. Same with that one to the link 3. And now when we move it, it moves with it. So that is pretty nice and yeah, that is what I would like to show you. Okay, fine. Thanks.